Hey everybody, Scott Kelby here from Kelby One. Welcome to part two of my HDR panos. So in part one, we showed how to do the camera settings, you know, like how to set it up for, for bracketing properly for an HDR pano. Then we put it together into this pano, which looks very uninspiring here in front of us. And it's, it's such a pretty area and it's not nearly as cool as it looked that day. Now you can see we already have settings over here inside the, uh, uh, basic panel in Lightroom and that's because we turned on the auto tone checkbox right and the auto tone checkbox if it does any it, it, it actually can work pretty well sometimes but if when it works poorly it, it I think it overexposes the image and I think that's what you're seeing here is, is basically too bright of an image so the first thing that I would do is I would go ahead and back off the exposure a bit I would increase the contrast because it looks really flat and then it's kind of dark in here and stuff now, even though the, the, it looks, the contrast looks a whole lot better. I'm going to increase the shadows a little bit. And this is where I would probably reach for the adjustment brush and kind of brighten up some of these areas in here. I only have the exposure. Uh, let's go up about maybe uh, a stop and then just kind of paint in some of these areas that are kind of uh, a little dark. Wow, that's really bright. So a stop is way too much. Let's bring it down some. And let's pop a little light over there. And just right in these areas, kind of right in here, kind of dark, we'll just lighten those up a bit. All right, that kind of gets us in the ballpark as far as that goes. But otherwise, uh, I'm going to increase the clarity. Now, that is going to bring out the texture and enhance, you know, the uh, detail quite a bit. But it's still kind of just a meh looking. Now, there are some things we could do. I think the, the biggest problem here is that the sky is, is quite a bit too light. There's a couple ways we could deal with this. We can deal with it inside a Lightroom. Just get the adjustment brush. Uh, make sure new is selected. And then just roll it back to the left and kind of paint over the sky. And that would kind of give us a little more dramatic, darker sky. And yes, I'm painting right over those trees. It's supposed to be dark outside. I'm not too worried about it. If I spilled over, which I did, I'm going to hold the Option key on Mac. Excuse me. The Alt key on Windows, not the Control key. That brings up that menu. And then we can go back and decide if that's a little too dark. But that kind of gets us, I think, a little more in the ballpark. So just with those changes, let's see where we're at. From there to there. So we've come a long way. Now, if it were me, and it is, here's what I would do next. I would probably go to Nick. Color Effects Pro 4. Now, that's a free plugin from Google. You can just go to Google and ask for it. it you can install it right here inside of Lightroom. Photo, uh, edit in, and you would go to, where is it? Color Effects Pro 4. I got too many plugins here. We would go right here to Color Effects Pro 4. You could do that there. Uh, if you have the new Luminar from MacFun, it has got a lot of great presets. You could go there. Uh, in this case, we're going to go to Color Effects Pro. Now, you can go to it here, and you won't you won't be able to have a lot of control over what happens. You're basically going to choose your settings, apply it, and you're done. The reason I prefer to go to Photoshop is the settings that I'm going to use are they're a little too intense. So I can go into Photoshop, put them on their own layer, and then back them off a bit. So I'm going to go to Photoshop uh, because I can. But you could just run it in. And I'll show you what it would look like if you just ran it in Lightroom. Let's jump over first to Photoshop. I'm pressing Command E on a Mac, which would be Control E on a Windows PC. It's going to jump me over to Photoshop here within 45 minutes to an hour. No, it's 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 getting there. It's uh, it's opening. Now, this is a huge file, right? This file is almost 50 inches long. It's very, very high resolution. I'm going to real quickly, just so things go faster, it's 11,000 pixels wide. Let's make it 2,400 pixels wide. That way it goes faster and you don't have to sit there and watch as many status bars. All right, go to filter. Uh, Nick Collection, we're going to choose Color Effects Pro 4. Now, at this point, I can just that's it. I could just stop, and, and that's this is the way it would be in Lightroom. You would choose a filter and be done with it, right? That's how it would be. It would be. Um, but because we're in Photoshop, I'm going to show you the extra advantage. I'll tell you where the Lightroom-only part would stop. So let's pretend we're in Lightroom because it looks just the same. I would choose Detail Extractor from the list here, Detail Extractor. Now, your list will probably be longer. These are my favorites, so Detail Extractor is one of my favorite. I usually go for either Tonal Contrast which looks warmer and a different kind of detail and uh, or detail extractor, which brings out more detail, but it looks flatter. So because it looks flat, I add a second filter on top. I go over here to add filter, right? And then I go to 
Pro Contrast. Now, to see the presets for Pro Contrast, click right here. And there's four of them. And there's kind of the flat one. There's Auto Enhance, which always looks kind of funky. There's Dynamic Contrast or Strong Contrast. I usually go with Dynamic Contrast. And if you look at the image here, I think it's too much. It's over the top. I'm not worried about that. I'm going to back it off in uh, inside of Photoshop. But in Lightroom, I don't really have any way to back it off besides going and messing with all the individual things here. And so I prefer to do it in Photoshop. But in Lightroom, you're going to wind up with the full power, basically. I'm going to click OK, and it's going to put the full juice on it. And see if you don't go, yeah, that seems like a little much. Yeah, see, look at that. Here's before and after. I don't want it to look all HDR'd up. I just want to bring out the detail. So here's what I do. I will usually drop this down by quite a bit, maybe as much as like 50% because I just I want a hint of it. I don't want it to hit you over the head. All right. Now, if you think a part of it, so I like what this does to the rocks and all in here, and the, you know I, I like all that. I even okay with what it does to the sound. This the sky's looking a little fakey to me. So I have one of two choices. I can add a layer mask right here. I can grab the brush tool, make sure that the opacity is at 100%, and I could paint over it and bring back the original sky like it looked before we started. And sky is one of the things that looks the fakiest if you put effects on it, so I might just bring it back to what it was originally. And if you think that there's maybe a little too much on the sand, you can decide, do I want to go all the way back to the original, or do I want to go halfway back? If you want to go halfway back, then you're going to lower the opacity and then paint over the, the uh, sand a little bit and you still get some of the sand effect but not all of it. And so you can see why you have a little more control when you go over to the Photoshop version. In Lightroom you would just go back to Lightroom and you would have, you know, you would click OK in the Nick software and it would be back in Lightroom and it would just be the full bore thing. So when you're done, you know, you'll sharpen the heck out of it. Filter, sharpen, you know, sharpen it to death. Oh, this is too high for that low resolution image. Remember, I lowered it down to, uh, here, let's get it down. I lowered it down to uh, that 2400 pixels. Is, is, this is, that was too high of a setting. That setting I was like kind of for my regular high resolution images. And then let's kind of take a look at what we got. And then when we're done, you know, we would then take that back to Lightroom by pressing save and close. And then when we go back to Lightroom, it would appear and you have the edited version there and then you can see the original so we brought out some more detail and stuff and there's more work to be done I mean you can you can still tweak it and stuff but that's the basics of what I would do hey I can see one other problem can I fix it for you real quick do you notice how now this is it just me but does the horizon line seem to be going upward a little bit where it should be kind of straight across <laughs> that horizon line seems a little funky let's jump it back over to uh let's just take the original this is the copy already so i'm just gonna i don't want two copies right here's what we're gonna do i would go this is what i would do anyway go to free transform all right command t on mac control t on windows and then i would do is i would hold the command key on mac control key on windows and I'm going to, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry, I did something wrong. I don't want to move the whole image. I just want to move just that part of the beach, like right there, maybe. Just there, just that part of the beach. Now go to Free Transform. I'm going to hold Command on Mac, Control on Windows, and I'm going to kind of tweak it down so it's not going upward any longer. There we go. Now, doing that, making it straight, because you can. I'll show you before and after, it leaves that little gap up top. So I'm going to go and select that little gapped area. I'm going to go to modify and expand it by four pixels. And that helps the next thing, which is it helps content aware fill. And then it fills in that area perfectly. And we've straightened out our horizon line and stuff like that. So we wind up with that that eventual pano so that's the deal hope you found that helpful and uh again this this panel was taken as part and i go into much more detail but it was taken uh, as a part of my class on kelby one on processing landscape photos so the first half of the class is me on location going through the landscape photography essentials things you got to know for landscape photography including accessories and tools and techniques we take the same images that we shot on location in part two and go through all of the post processing so you see a whole bunch of things and this is one of those projects so if you're interested in taking the class you can take it for free just take the seven day trial and watch it right now 
Go to kelby1.com and sign on up. All right, guys. Thanks much, and we'll catch you next time.